friends and welcome back to another back to back session um, uh, of has lecture series on factors which affect drug action now i thought of doing this session uh, tomorrow but then i thought maybe today itself because uh, anyway i want to end this up so that i can start with something else okay so uh, just bear with me okay so anyway so uh, good morning again and uh, not a session for today few other factors which i need to discuss with you again a lot of examples which i may not be able to cover up right in the session but the important ones definitely i'll try to explain the concepts to you uh, the first of that would be some psychological factors which can affect drug response now if you are new to my channel then you can go back and watch my uh, video on a placebo uh, so that will give you some hint on uh, what placebos are and how psychological factors impact drug action but anyway in short placebos are drugs uh, which are inert drugs inert substances which are given in the form of a medicine so inert substances can be anything can be just a sugar coated tablet any you know it doesn't contain active drug inside it just a sugar coated ones which looks like a tablet right or it can be uh, some other capsule some other kind of form of a drug which is given to individual so but individual believes that this is the, this is the drug and um, he just is psychologically very happy because he is receiving it now people with chronic kind of diseases like okay so where you don't have so many drugs okay but you want that the patient should psychologically be very happy taking some or the other form of medicine now in those conditions we try to give a placebo okay there are other ways other things also for which we give placebo but that's apart from that so placebos have a psychological impact uh, the patient's belief makes him um, comfortable that he is taking a medicine but actually it's a inert substance and he just takes it for a very long time and no adverse effects because it's a inert substance so very good as far as chronic disease management is concerned right so placebos do have a role because psychologically it's important that the patient first believes in what he is taking and then the second thing is of course the physical uh, problems but that that's another part uh, psychological impact is the first one okay so that, that's what is about psychological factors affecting drug response and important would be uh, the placebo uh the second in the list is of course uh, cumulative effect of drugs okay so drugs if you are taking on a very long time they try to accumulate and can cause uh, problems to a particular organ of a body the best example of that would be if you are taking chloroquine for a very long time then chloroquine can cause retinal damage okay so try to look for that if the patient is on chloroquine for a very long time especially chloroquine given for not malaria it's given for something else for a very long time then it's a issue right so ophthalmic examinations are of course important if the patient takes chloroquine for a very long period of time the next in the line of course is tolerance uh, how should i explain tolerance one minute so you watching this video right uh, okay and you have already watched around 4 minutes of the video and you are bearing with me you are watching it uh, so that, that's tolerance right that's tolerance so in layman terms if you are comfortable in a uncomfortable situation <laughs> you are uncomfortable you are comfortable in an uncomfortable situation that's what is tolerance okay for example you are sitting in a lecture which you don't like and still if you want to just be there for the presence of attendance and that's tolerance okay you never had this tolerance maybe 20 years back when you were a kid you were going to your form 1 and you never had that kind of a tolerance you used to go around in the classroom and just try to be happy but that's not the case right now right you have come across so many things in life and you what has been developed is a kind of tolerance so i always say that being comfortable in a uncomfortable scenario is what is called as tolerance right so tolerance is uh, as far as drugs is concerned uh, uh, that was the layman thing right so, but, but as for drugs is concerned uh, you have two kinds of tolerance one is natural tolerance and the other one is the acquired tolerance right? the natural tolerance is basically due to the race the genes of an individual and so on so uh, people of uh, a certain kind of race uh, the black race might be uh, the ones uh, which are tolerant to the mediatic action of particular drugs and so on 
certain species might be tolerant to specific drugs okay so not to go into those animal species but they are tolerant to specific drugs and so on so that's which comes from within so naturally you are tolerant to a particular uh, kind of a scenario the second is the acquired tolerance so the example which i give to you right now a few minutes back is something on acquired tolerance a tolerance which was not there with you when you were a kid but now eventually over a period of time you have acquired that kind of a tolerance so it's acquired if repetitively if the person is subjected to a kind of a stressful environment what happens is he becomes tolerant to that action to that action okay so tolerance is in medicine terms or in pharmacological terms is that you give a drug repetitively to a individual what happens is the patient becomes unresponsive to that the actions of a drug right? so that is what we call it as uh, tolerance so tolerance can develop to uh, a lot of drugs over a period of time uh, a tolerance can develop to a particular action but may not be prevalent to the other actions the best example would be of morphine so morphine is a drug which is has addictive liabilities so can cause a lot of uh, psychological dependence as far as uh, morphine is concerned so uh, so tolerance might develop to that action so the patients require more and more drugs to keep them happy so they just keep on taking these drugs but tolerance doesn't develop to con actions of morphine other than cns so for example if you talk on terms of constipation the side effect of morphine it doesn't develop tolerance to that the patient remains constipated throughout if he's taking morphine so that that's what so actions which are specific uh, tolerance might develop to that but for other actions uh, tolerance may not develop so that also does happens with acquired tolerance but generally it is seen that if the patient is taking a drug for a long time the response of a drug goes down so you need to change the drug from one drug to other drug and so on um, now that was about just tolerance but tolerance you can also view it from some other angle is of cross tolerance right cross tolerance cross against i split the term cross and tolerance okay tolerance remains the same what i discussed now cross tolerance you have two drugs which have similar kind of action for example alcohol is a pleasure drug but it's also in large doses a depressive drug for the uh, central nervous system okay so uh, you have drugs other than alcohol for example you have barbiturates benzodiazepines and so on so people who take alcohol for a very long time may become tolerant to even actions of these other drugs like barbiturates and so on so this is what we call it as cross tolerance so tolerance develops for one drug but the other drug also has the same action same kind of action so even the person becomes tolerant to the action of the other drug so something of cross kind of a tolerance between drugs which have similar action now why it should be like that now we have a lot of theories on why tolerance should come Uh, there are kinetic theory, kinetic theories, there are dynamic theory theories. Uh, kinetic theory theories would say that uh, the drug is eliminated faster or metabolized faster over a period of time, so the concentration achieved is not the same over a period of time. So less drug available, so less of action. The dynamic says that receptors becomes hyposensitive to the actions of a drug, uh, or the there would be some other changes within the receptor so that the binding of a drug to the receptor might have a, a, what i can say changes over a period of time so that can have an impact on uh, the ultimate outcome of how the drug acts and so on so these are all the possibilities which can occur uh, for a tolerance to develop but clinically if i want to see uh, what i need to remember is that if i am giving a drug for a very long time there are chances that the patient might develop tolerance and i need to change the drug to some other drug in the class or i need to change totally to a different class of drug so that that's a requirement right that's a requirement even if we need cardiology drugs beta blockers and so on so you need to change it over a period of time you cannot expect the same kind of response over a period of time no even asthmatics and so on. so that was about uh, tolerance um, and cross tolerance and some theories on how it develops and so on there is something something else than tolerance that is tachyphylaxis that is a rapid development of tolerance okay rapid development of tolerance is what we call as tachyphylaxis uh, especially drugs like the best example which i always remember and always tell is about ephedrine ephedrine is indirectly acting a drug and uh, it releases catecholamine its action is to release catecholamine so it helps in release of catecholamine that's the way it acts uh, 
but the release should match with the production right so if there is no production no adequate production there won't be any release right so ephedrine will cause extensive release of these substances but the production does not match to that so ultimately the levels go down and what occurs is tachyphylaxis because you don't have any uh, hormone to be released later on so just just goes down so no stimulant action with ephedrine but this develops in a short period of time so that is what we call it as uh, kind of a uh, tachyphylactic kind of a thing um, that you need to remember so it's slightly different from it's a kind of tolerance but rapidly developing uh, tolerance it's like you are attending a army camp uh, you as a person are attending a army camp so uh, you have no other go but to adjust you cannot run out of the camp you need to pull through uh, those conditions so you become eventually not eventually so in a brief period of time your entire personality changes okay you were a very lazy guy or a lazy girl till now and you just attend army camp for 5 7 days in which you had to run for 20 kilometers and there is no other go so you start running and in 7 days your entire perspective about life changes so from that that lazy thing to the entirely active person who thinks more about health and uh, you know kind of strength building and so on so a complete upside down within a short period of time so that is what is tachyphylaxis i always tell it in that way so but same as students but rapidly develop so that's about the last in the list would be definitely on uh, drug uh, resistance uh, i won't talk much on that because uh, anyway there would be uh, sessions in which drug resistance will be done extensively but drug resistance also affect uh, the drug response uh because uh, you know if there is drug resistance of course uh, there is a lot of issues because the drugs may not be effective the best example is on antibiotics right antibiotics uh, uh, will um, there was a lot of streptomycin for example for tuberculosis it was the drug in 1950s but what happened eventually is that resistance occurred to streptomycin over a period of time and nowadays you see it only being given if required because the resistance levels are very high to that antibiotic of course we have so many other drugs which can help in cure of tuberculosis but not streptomycin we use it in asia but of course we know that a resistance issue is there because it has affected the way in which drugs act because there is decline in the efficacy of a drug due to resistance okay so that is about drug resistance uh, in short i should say so that was my quick take on all the factors which uh, most of the factors if not all the factors i'm not sure if i covered everything but that was about most of the factors which uh, have a impact on a uh, drug response uh, so i hope you like all my uh, three sessions uh, in this list uh, now if you are watching this thing then maybe you want to watch my episode number 2 and 1 because they will help you to build you through the knowledge on and the drug responses and factors which affect that uh, stay tuned to my channel do subscribe